three medical doctors have written an opinion piece on abortion that's making the rounds. Today it appeared on the front page of the New York Times and I want to show you this article. So let's have a look. Here is that article in the New York Times, January 23rd. Early abortion looks nothing like what you've been told. Now this is an opinion piece written by three uh, doctors providing abortion care to um, pregnant women. Uh, the story begins with a story of a woman in Texas who finds herself pregnant, senses that she will have a problem in Texas, flies to New York City and visits one of these three doctors and gets her abortion. The doctor began by performing an ultrasound and then uh, completed a manual uterine aspiration procedure. And that's pretty much it there. Afterwards, the doctor conducted a routine tissue examination and uh, she identified decidual tissue or uterine lining as well as a gestational sac, the visible evidence of the pregnancy. At this stage of pregnancy, the embryo is not typically visible to the naked eye. So now this is going to be the theme of the article that these embryos are very small uh, at this stage of the pregnancy and they're typically not visible to the naked eye and that's a little bit of a surprise to people. Skipping down here, Afterward, the doctor offered to show the early pregnancy tissue to the young woman, and uh, she told the doctor that it wasn't what she expected. Quote, I thought you were going to bring in something that was shaped like a little fetus or something, and it was not that at all. Skipping down here, the, uh, the three doctors write in this opinion piece, It's important to us to counter medical misinformation related to early pregnancy because about 80% of abortions in the United States occur at nine weeks or earlier. So much of the imagery that people see about abortion comes from abortion opponents who have spent decades spreading misleading fetal imagery to further their cause. And this is the one of the diagrams shown in the, uh, in the, in the New York Times piece here showing the material that they extract at different stages of the pregnancy, and they, so these are washed and and then um, shown to the to the mother here. Okay, so skipping down here now, this their photos were shown last fall in the Guardian and went viral on social media, as it says here. Skipping down, many people, even those who support abortion rights, did not believe the photos were accurate. So a lot of people were surprised by this because they had, everyone was used to seeing images where you could make out um, the, the fetus and, and the different uh, stages of the embryo and so forth. And so this was a, a surprise that uh, there wasn't anything visible. Skipping down, quote, uh, When we examine the tissue after a procedure, everyone is consistently surprised. Now, now this is a professor at Rutgers uh, who's teaching um, medical students. When we examine the tissue after a procedure, everyone is consistently surprised. They expect to see an embryo, fetus, or at least some body parts. He told us, describing the student's experience as underwhelmed. So that's the theme of the article. Now let me summarize this article. Images showing the embryo are misinformation. That's a, a basic point that they're making. Images showing the embryo in one form or another are misinformation. And why is that? Because in most abortions you can't see the embryo. So for these medical doctors it is important to show these photos. Why is that? Because they reveal, the photos reveal, the smallness of the embryo. In other words, the smallness of the embryo is important. Why is that? Why is the smallness of the embryo important? Because the smallness of the embryo justifies the abortion. In other words, because the embryo is small, it forfeits the right to life. So rights are determined by physical attributes. This is, of course, bigotry. Historically, this goes. Uh, uh, this has always been going on historically. Ethnicity, skin color, etc., and now size. These are all examples of bigotry when rights are dictated by these physical attributes. Now, bigotry fits well with evolution and evolutionary theory. Why? Because with evolution, everything is physical. 
In other words, evolution is materialistic. Now let me give you an example here. Let's talk about consciousness. Under evolution, consciousness is purely physical. In evolution, consciousness is merely a consequence of physical matter and energy in your skull racing around creating an illusion. It's just the physical matter and energy in your skull, in your body. In a, so to summarize, in evolution, everything in biology, according to evolution, even consciousness is purely physical. Since with evolution everything is physical, why shouldn't rights be determined by physical attributes? So you can see how these it fits together. And you have in this New York Times uh, this, this argument, this appeal to the physical attributes, specifically the smallness of the embryo.